record button. See, that's always the challenge. Okay, well, I'm gonna hit the, uh, the screen. This is my challenge. So, so we'll go. Yeah. So, so Lisa is an internationally recognized expert on transformational change, philanthropy, and charitable giving. A leading figure in the American nonprofit sector, her deep fundraising experience, groundbreaking research on giving patterns, and influential ideas on transformational philanthropy have made her one of the most trusted philanthropic advisors in the nation. She has been on numerous TV and radio appearances, and Lisa has the belief that anyone can be a positive change, a positive agent for change by making a difference and achieving goals through the power of three. And she is truly a highly sought after keynote speaker, delivering compelling and easy applicable tools for growth and achievement while, pay, while maintaining a healthy work-life balance full of happiness and joy. Lisa actually joined us several years ago um, to assist with the education um, and training of the uh, class of governors from 2015, 2016, when I served as the international president. And I know that Lisa has traveled in other um, realms of our Kiwanis world. So we're, Lisa, we are very happy to have you with us tonight. Um, if you have questions for Lisa throughout the evening, you're welcome to put them in the chat. And we will get to those questions at the end. But Lisa, thank you for being with us. And I will turn the program over to you. Oh, well, thank you, Sue. And Sue is right. We went to high school together and we had a lot of fun and we didn't get in trouble. Sue and I were on, on the good side of the school. <laughs> Not that there were kids who got into trouble, but uh, she was in uh, a key club and um, I was in the pep club and our past, we, we were all about service and giving back. So happy to be here with you. And I was thrilled when I got Sue's call. Um, I love uh, Kiwanis and I love helping Sue out and I love my alma mater, Michigan State. So it's a trifecta. And those of you who were with me and Sue a few years ago, as she mentioned in 2015, 2016, obviously know, I love to talk about doing things in three. So thank you, Sue, and thank you, Kiwanis, for having me. And before I get started, I always like to share um, a story to get everybody on the same page. And I don't know about you, but um, I love to walk. And lately, I, you know, my walking paths are either closed or, you know, um, I have to go different routes because there's too many people. And I might notice something going on in a neighborhood that I hadn't noticed before. And um, imagine that happens, or imagine we're out of COVID and you're walking and you come upon a construction site and you see three people working on it and you wonder what's going on here. I've been locked in, you know, I haven't been out. As you said, what do we do on a Thursday night anyways? Um, and you thought, well, I'm gonna ask. So you ask the first person, hey, what's going on here? And the first person says to you, well, isn't it obvious? I'm piling some bricks. I thought, well, that doesn't help. tell me what's going up here. And so then you go to the second person, you say, hey, what's going on here? And the second person looks at you and says, wasn't well, it pretty obvious? I'm building a wall. And you get to the third person and you ask them what they're doing. And by the way, they're doing the same thing as the first and the second person. And that person looks at you and says, I'm building a great cathedral. And I think sometimes during this COVID fear period, we can feel like finding happiness and joy is like we're piling bricks every day or we're building a wall. And I hope to put a few more tools in your toolbox that actually says, it's like we're building a great cathedral. When we come out of this pandemic, when we come back into our new normal, what will happiness and joy look like? And how will we have developed it further because we've experienced it during tough times. And I do believe it's possible. I'm tired. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just tired. I'm tired of Zoom meetings. I'm tired of looking at my four walls. I'm tired of eating my own food. <laughs> I'm tired of having to cook every night. I'm tired of never seeing my friends. I'm tired of not being able to go to plays and being able to go to museums. I am simply tired and burned out. And the thing I'm most tired about is the word unprecedented. If I hear that word unprecedented one more time, I think my head's going to explode. I'm like, what in the world? Yeah, stop the unprecedented. Here's where we're at. And then I was reading something about um, former presidential candidate um, Bobby Kennedy, who quoted the Irish poet um, Robert Burns, who said, these are interesting times. So I started thinking, instead of being so frustrated and bothered by the word unprecedented 
and tired of its use, why not start using the word interesting? So when my friends say unprecedented now, I go, it's interesting, it's not unprecedented. But I think we're at a point where many of us are Zoomed out. How many Zoom calls can we have? How many things can we multitask in a single day? We are just burned out. And then we have the guilt. <laughs> there were all these things we were going to do. We were going to learn a new language. We were going to lose weight. We were going to remodel a room. We all had these things when we went into the pandemic. And if you remember, it was 15 days to slow the, slow the spread, then 30 days. I remember the first time I we went to the grocery store, I thought, I have enough to last the pandemic because I didn't think it was going to last this long, obviously. But um, we had all of these projects we were going to do. I had this project that I was going to um, put some shelves in a, in a room and I had gotten the wood from a friend who was having her place remodeled years ago. It sat in the garage for about eight years. So I made this big production where, you know, I showed everybody the wood via video. And then the next day, you know, I got the saw. I borrowed the saw from somebody. And then, you know, I showed where the um, boards were going to go, the shelves were going to go. And the boards were heavy. And so then I had brackets and I ordered two smaller brackets. And I had bigger brackets and, you know, all these things going on. And then I just stopped talking about the shelves. I just stopped talking about the shelves. And then I have people say, hey, I haven't seen anything on the shelves lately. And I would just... I felt guilty because I decided not to do the shelves. I did something else. And I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do? I feel guilty. Like I had this expectation on myself that somehow I was going to accomplish this. And people, if I put it out there, people would hold me accountable. And then when they started holding me accountable, I got, I felt guilty. I, I felt that guilt. And then we have shame going around. We are masters at shaming, you know. We shame people for their appearance, you know, if they've got the gray roots, if they got the long hair. I tell everyone this is my COVID hair. Those of you who were with us in 2015, 2016 know that I had much shorter hair. That's not true. It did not grow in COVID, but we we're really good at looking at people's houses. You know, I remember when Tom Hanks first hosted Saturday Night Live, we're all looking like, oh, is that really his kitchen? You know, we're great on shaming people and shaming people for whether they wear masks, whether they wear masks correctly. I mean, we can find anything to shame people about. And then we went into this phase of, oh, 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 you ought to be doing this. You ought to be doing that. And as you can see throughout all this, there's no happiness and joy. And then we're just frustrated. We're isolated. I just want to, I just want to go to a wedding. I just want to go to my nephew's graduation. I just want to be able to go to a funeral of somebody that I love that passed away. I want to go to the hospital to visit my loved one. I am so frustrated that I'm locked in. I told Sue that our restaurants had been closed since October. We just opened this last Saturday in Chicago to 25%. Maybe it's 20%, but everybody's just frustrated. We are just so frustrated and feeling isolated and just want to bust out of this. And people are expressing this all the time. And then if you're like me, you look at the numbers. This is my favorite um, place to go and look at the numbers. It's covidusa.net. And every, you know, it's real time, it's updated. And if you go to this below, it lists each state and the number of cases, the number of deaths, the number of hospitalizations and the increase. Yeah, I've studied it a lot. And if you're like me, when COVID began, I would get up in the morning and I'd watch the early news programs. Then I'd get workout. Then I'd be home to watch Governor Cuomo in New York give the update because New York was the epicenter. And then, you know, I'd do some work and eat lunch. And then our mayor would come on Lightfoot with her health director. And I'd watch that. And then our governor would come on with the Illinois state health director. And I'd watch that. And then I had to watch the White House briefing. And then, of course, the nightly news was on. And I was exhausted. I didn't see if they, I could cite numbers like nobody's business. I was so caught up and all this, let alone or on top of it, the political election that was happening. And those of you who might remember my first career was in political fundraising. I was all up and everything all the time and feeling fatigued, isolated, guilty, shame, and frustration and isolation. And I imagine a lot of other people were too. A lot of other people are like, yeah, all those things you're saying, Lisa, I, I feel those too. 
So then what does hope look like? Well, first of all, I think hope should be an acronym for helping to overcome pessimistic expectations. Think about it, helping overcome pessimistic expectations. There are going to be better days ahead. And there's a vaccine, you know, and another vaccine developed and another vaccine developed. Sometimes we tend to only focus on, oh, well, you got to get two of the shots and it's got to be the cold start. Hello, people. There's a vaccine. There's hope. There's hope on the horizon. We've learned better how to treat um, COVID patients. We've learned better how to keep ourselves safe during COVID. And when people were really, really being up on 2020, you know, when the new year changed and they were being up, like, oh my God, I can't wait for 2020 to go. I actually kind of felt sorry for 2020 because I really liked 2020. 2020 caused me to slow down. You know, when I look back at where I started the first of the year in the first 75 days, there is no way I could have kept up that pace. No way at all. You know, a good day was when I had only seven meetings. A tough day was when I had 11. 11 meetings! 11 meetings, not in my house like this, but running around. And I started reevaluating what was really important to me and what gave me hope. And I realized it was the little things and it was the things that I did to help other people. I have some neighbors, I have three little kids and they're four, seven and 11 and they are amazing little kids. I've never had children, but I get to live through those children. Now, <clears throat> the fact of the matter is I have six nieces and nephews I adore that are 20 to 26 and I haven't seen them. And I could be really sad about that or I could be hopeful I'm gonna see them and make sure that I'm a presence in my neighbor's children's life. That this is what hope looks like these days. Hope is being positive of what's coming, being positive that you're healthy. And I don't want to dismiss the fact that some of you may have had COVID and gone through terrible times. Um, some of you may have had family members that had COVID and are still recovering. They could be long haulers. I've had family members um, have COVID in my, in my immediate circle of um, family, um, and some of you may have lost people to COVID. And for that, I am truly, truly sorry. But I think there's still a way to be hopeful about the future and where we move into. And where do we find that hope? Where do we find that happiness and joy? Well, I love this photo because it reminds me of my friend Peggy. Peggy is one of nine Irish children, and she is a redhead and flaming on fire. She is just a, a go-getter. And her mom's in a nursing home, and they go and they do visits like this. And she said she realized after the visit, well, it did bring her some happiness and joy. It kind of made her sad. And when she was leaving, or one of her, you know, eight brothers and sisters, you know, mom was kind of like, mm. So Peggy had this brilliant idea. She went to her photo albums. And she started taking out photos. You know, we don't look at photo albums anymore. We have all of our photos on our phone. We don't look at photo albums. And she took out a couple pictures and she put them in an envelope. And the next time she went to the nursing home, she dropped them off at the desk and said, can you give these to my mom? And her mom was thrilled. And then she'd mail them to her mom and her mom would get a piece of mail. I love, as you all know, getting a piece of personal correspondence. That's what Peggy was doing. And then she realized she had an adult son in Connecticut and an adult son in Kansas City. Why couldn't she also mail them photos? Now with them, she said, I also mailed a piece of Tupperware because I want those photos back. <laughs> She's like, but it brought her happiness and joy to be reliving those memories of times together. And it also brought her sons as well as her mother happiness and joy. And it seems like such a simple thing. We're like, oh, why can't I do that? You know, where can you find happiness and joy? How about when you're at the grocery store picking up a bouquet of flowers for yourself? and saying, this is my happiness and joy. How about thinking about looking forward to when you might be able to Zoom with somebody that you really care about? My family waited till November to start having Zoom family calls. I guess we thought we, we would be coming out of it at any moment. But we look forward to it every other every other Sunday. We have a family Zoom call and it's my mom. My father passed away a long time ago. 
my two siblings, and then the six nieces and nephews with their partners. And it's an amazing time that we get together, we find out what everybody is doing, how everybody is catching up. I, this year, for happiness and joy, I thought, what am I gonna do to focus on happiness and joy? And I came up with three things. Number one is I started a virtual book club. Now, understand I got kicked out of my last book club. <laughs> I started a virtual book club with my friends all across the country because they could all be part of it. And what I said to them is I realized last year when I was doing all those COVID numbers that I only read one book, plus a textbook. I am a, a professor plus a textbook I read, but like really, I only read one book and it was called Dear Edward. Jenna Hager Bush recommended it. It's really pretty good. Um, and I thought, okay, I wanna hold myself accountable, kind of like those shelves. <laughs> and that brings me happiness and joy. So I sent it out, I, you know, I, everyone said, yes, I'm in. Some people said, yes, I'm in, but I'm not gonna read the book. I'm just coming with a glass of wine at the time you're all gonna discuss it because I need uh, women power time. I started a book club. I committed to yoga. I am a walker. I'm a walker every single day and uh, I'm not a stretcher. <laughs> and I ended up um, the week of New Year's on with a back spasm on all fours on the floor and I couldn't move and I realized I needed to do yoga. So I committed to doing yoga um, and I do it every other day. I'm still sticking with it, it's only January. And the third thing to really look forward for happiness and joy, I thought I want to learn about champagne. Because when I go to the grocery store, like for New Year's Eve, though this year it kind of got bypassed because, you know, I was on the floor on all fours, I, I, I don't know how to pick out a good bottle of champagne. You know, when I wanted to learn about red wines, I took a class, or when I wanted to learn about international wines, I took a class, and white wines, I, I need to find a class um, that probably in the fall, when we come out of COVID, hopefully, that I can take and invite friends to take and learn about champagne and sparkling wine and Prosecco. So if you got any advice, shoot me a message about that um, because I'd love to hear some, some tips and stories. But happiness and joy can be found in so many places if we're just willing to look. Um, my neighbors, the ones that have the three kids, we um, we can't do a lot together because of COVID, but you know, they're always, hi, Miss Lisa, and they got a new dog and that. And, about two Saturdays ago, I got a text from Emily, the mom, and she said, what's your favorite ice cream? I'm like, and I wanted to ask a million questions, but I said, mint chocolate chip. And the next thing you know, they brought me over a pint of milk, ch uh, mint chocolate chip ice cream. And they knocked on the door and they, uh, and they had their mask and they go, we just wanted to say thank you. And here's, here's some mint chocolate chip ice cream. Oh my God. I love ice cream, happiness and joy. How did they know? It's those little moments, those happiness. Yesterday, I talked to my seventh grade best friend from Montana who lives in Idaho, Chrissy. And that was a happiness and joy moment. What 2020 taught me is to hit pause and to find those moments. I think I was so used to happiness and joy being a destination that I didn't realize it was available in the journey with me every day. So I like to give everyone some tools, some actual concrete things you can do. And I think being grateful and giving back is an amazing thing that you can do that will propel you into the state of happiness and joy. And I like to do three things um, every day for the world and three things for me, in addition to three things for my business. So the three things I do every single day um, for the world is I try to pick up a piece of garbage and put it in the right receptacle. I don't know if you remember, those of you of a certain age remember in the 70s, the put litter in its place campaign um, about trash that was on the highways and roads in America. And it was a campaign and it showed the commercial. There was a commercial with a Native American, an indigenous person, a first peoples canoeing and seeing all this garbage and it zoomed in the camera and a single tear was going down his cheek. Kind of stuck with me. So when I'm out walking, I pick up a piece of garbage, trash that's on the ground and I put it in the right receptacle. Now COVID makes it a little harder. It was always a challenge before, but you know, I make sure I have my hand sanitizer with me. I'm just not, okay, it goes in the right receptacle. <clears throat> the second thing I like to do, as you might guess, is I like to write a piece of personal correspondence every day. I like to send a note to somebody. I, I love congratulating people. One of my friends 
in October, her whole computer crash got the blue screen of death and she lost everything. And I hooked her up with my technology guy, but she really lost all her data and backup and she had no backup. Been like since August, since October, and she was working on a big project for the University of Chicago. So she found a place to send out the hard drive and they didn't know if they'd be able to recover, but if they were, then she'd have to pay. Well, they did and it was $900 and she was so happy. It was about 12 weeks later and she got the hard drive back and everything was recovered. And I sent her a congratulations note because I know it weighed on her mind because she had just transferred all her photos from her phone and her niece had gotten married and she thought those had been lost forever. And it was a silly thing, but I said, oh my God, congratulations, your hard drive got recovered. You know? And she loved getting something in the mail, something that just was out of the blue and not a bill and not a, a, you know, a flyer of some sort. Then the third thing I try to do every single day is pay someone a genuine compliment. I think we are so stingy with our compliments in our in our society right now. We are so ready to criticize. I have given up criticizing women. You know, I really have. <laughs> you know, I can jump on that train. I can go down that Twitter rabbit hole, that Facebook hole. I can do that very easily. But when we start criticizing successful people and especially successful women, I was like, I am off this train. I am going to pay compliments to people. I'm going to tell people, good job. I really appreciate that you stood up in that meeting. Thanks for that comment. Thanks for that email. I want to pay people genuine compliments. Every week I have that I teach, I have a guest panel in. And the next day I send those guest panelists a genuine thank you note and say, I, you guys rocked it. You are amazing. This is what the students said. And thank you, you know, paying them a compliment that they did a really, really good job. Because it's really easy to say, well, oh, gosh, I wish they hadn't said that. Or, oh, gosh, you know, I wish they, you know, had talked longer. Or, oh, God, no. Paying a genuine compliment. Even my students, you know, you know how Zoom fatigue students are. And they come and I go, oh, my God, I love seeing your beautiful faces. And I do. I love seeing their beautiful faces. And that might be the first compliment or the first interaction they've had of the day. And they smile and they're like, wow, this is refreshing. We're together three hours and 15 minutes. I gotta keep it lively, folks. <laughs> then the three things I do for me. One, most of you know, I love coffee and I have a really good cup of coffee in the morning. I love Starbucks, Italian roast, French roast. Um, when I used to travel and have to have that coffee in the hotel room, ooh, no. But I love a good cup of coffee in the morning. I love to exercise every day for an hour. As I said, I like to walk, now yoga, it benefits me. You know, it doesn't help my partner, my family, it benefits just me. And it's my time for me. It's me filling me up. And then the third thing I like to do every day is have a good glass of wine at the end of the day. And dry January's killing me, folks. <laughs> it really is. Like, I love to have a really good glass of wine. And uh, Australia, I know you're in the house, but I love that New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc from Marlborough. So, uh, you know, um, I think you guys have good wines too, though, that I've tasted. But I like those three things. So I say to folks, think about the three things you could do every day that's giving back to the world. Is there a smile? Is there a compliment? Is there something that you could do for the world? And what can you do for yourself? One of my friends tapes General Hospital. And yes, Luke and Laura are still on there. Well, Laura Mars or Luke is referenced and you can pick up exactly where it's at. Another one likes walking her dogs. Another one likes having a beer with her husband on the, the sun porch. Another one likes to journal. Another one likes to meditate. Another one likes to take bubble baths. If you notice, all these things don't cost a ton of money because I know a lot of us are struggling financially or trying to be economically frugal. So pick things that fill up your soul and that mean something to you that will have an impact in your life and help you be able to do your job better and face the world better. You know, I read this book um, and it happened to be from my pen, friend Peggy. She gave me this book called, I don't know if you guys can see it, The Book of Awakening by Mark Nepo. And it's a devotional. Um, every day there's a page dedicated to, you know, the day and you read it and that. And there was a story of uh, two scientists really excited about discovery and they go see this wise man at the top of a mountain and they want to tell him all about it. And he says, no, I need served tea. And he fills the tea and they're overflowing and they're like, whoa, 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 too much tea. And he says, 
that's what's in your brain. Clear out your brain and then come back and talk to me. You know, like you can't have a conversation if all you want to do is put out there. And then at the end, there was a story. Um, and it, it just stuck with me. It said, every day is like packing a suitcase. And what are you going to pack in your suitcase today? And what they say is you can only pack this author. You can only pack five things. You know, if you remember traveling, I was a great overpacker. Well, it might rain. Well, we might go to the beach. Well, we might, you know, and most of the stuff in my suitcase never got used. I used the same four or five things. So I said, think about the things in your suitcase. What would be in your suitcase today? And I always think, well, my health, my business, uh, the relationship I'm in, uh, my family, and my friends. Okay, those are the five things I would put in the, my suitcase most days. So if you notice, COVID and all those numbers aren't in there. The whole election political season isn't in there. Um, you know, worrying about Zoom and Zoom fatigue and being isolated, none of that's in there. The things in there are things that I can control and that are important to me. And like today, I enjoy giving presentations. This to me is part of what I do for my business. I can't be doing this and walking on the 606 and grabbing a glass of wine. Well, maybe we could have had wine, <laughs> but I, you know, the point is what's in your suitcase today? What are you packing in your suitcase today? And then what are you gonna take out in this moment? And for me, that's been a really good tool to use with my friends and say to them, what's in your suitcase today? And what are you focused on? Because we can all get spinning and lose the focus that it really is the small things. It is about happiness and joy. It is about focusing on gratitude. My brother um, lives up in Cadillac, Michigan, and he bought his wife a new treadmill. He said, at least you want my old treadmill, the old one. And I'm like, oh, I know. When am I going, get it, get it. Cause when it's bad weather out. So we met halfway and I hadn't seen my brother in a year and a half because we had seen each other the June before the lockdown and you know plans went awry for that. And I got choked up and I was so grateful. Even though we sat in our own cars and we ate lunch car door to car door, I was so grateful and happy that I got to see my baby brother and that we were both safe. Also, he bought lunch, so that helped you, but I mean, he's always very generous. I'm joking there, but it was a great moment. It was a great moment to share, and I was filled with gratitude, and it was in my suitcase that day, family. So I'm going to leave you with that if you have hope, if you overcome your pessimistic expectations, and you focus on happiness and joy, including a little gratitude, you're going to be able to do this. Like, yeah! 2021 is going to be great. And I want to show you all what I keep on my kitchen counter. I keep this happiness jar. Okay, it's as big as my head. Got a lid on it. It's as big as my head. And I started my happiness jar in 2015. Probably, Sue, just before I came and spoke with your group. And um, I got it off the internet, you know, some social media site. And it said, put a jar together. Put some sort of jar together. This is three three levels up from where I started and put things in it that you were happy that happened. So when I started, it was, you know, when I go to a White Sox game or a Cubs game, the ticket stub, or when I went to a restaurant, the menu would go in or the matchbook would go in there, the business card or a play, stuff like that went in. A lot of wine corks, to be honest, would go in my happiness jar. And I was really scared the first year. I started in August of 2015 and I opened it in December that there'd be a lot of work things in there, but there weren't. And I've done it every year. The deal is you open it on New Year's Day and you spread it out and you look back over the year at the happiness and joy moments. You keep a pad of paper beside it with a pen and you write notes on it put in your happiness jar when things happen. Like my phone call with my friend Chrissy in Idaho yesterday. I wrote on a post-it note the day, and then I had a lovely phone call and I put it in my happiness jar because I was happy I got to talk to my friend. So I um, started the happiness jar and I was worried when 2020 happened, like what would I put in my happiness jar? My happiness jar was overflowing with all the amazing things that happened, you know, in 2020. And 
I was just like you guys. I was isolated. I was frustrated. There was some guilt. No about those shells, shame. <laughs> there was um, fatigue. But I, like the things I put in, this is um, the bag that the ice cream came in. You can see the cows there. This is the bag that the ice cream came in. So I wrote a little note on it and I put it in my happiness jar. It's a silly thing, obviously, but you think about all those moments that are happening, those small little moments that are happening, like my brother and me having a lunch car door to car door. And that's the way I felt when I saw him like, yes, we're going to get through this. I have hope. I have happiness and I have joy. That's where I'm focusing. I know what's in my suitcase every single day. I think about what am I packing in my suitcase and what am I leaving out? Because I really can't worry about Dr. Fauci and I really can't worry about President Biden or former President Trump or the Moderna vaccine or any of that. What I can worry about is how do I take care of me, my family, my loved ones, and how do I continue to be focused on happiness and joy? I hope this has helped you. Um, maybe re put a few tools in your toolbox. Um, I these this is how you can connect with me. Many of you are, um, but feel free to connect. Feel free to reach out and ask a question. We're going to leave the chat open. If you have questions, I'm going to hop over there and I hope Sue comes back out. She's been, I think, moderating the chat box so we can share um, some answers. But if it's something private you want to talk to me about, absolutely. If you email me, if you connect on social media, I will respond. I promise you that because we're all connected together. And um, I think it's a, it's a blessing that we get to live in these interesting times. You're on mute, I think. <laughs> Isn't that the sign of the day I'm on mute? I <laughs> yeah, think that's my be. happiness jar. <laughs> that's right, my happiness jar. Um, thank you so much. And there are, uh, if you have questions or comments, you're welcome to put them in the chat. I have been putting information in the chat um, for you, Lisa, your website. Uh, helping overcome pessimistic expectations, hope. You know, you think about that. It's like, let's really break this down. You know, we, we've all been, we all talk about how 2020, you know, what 2020, what it is. But reality is I, I can agree with you and say that it caused me to slow down. Yeah. I mean, it, it really caused me to slow down and think about who I was, what I was doing. Now, people will say, well, yeah, but you picked up this Thursday night gig. I'm like, well, yeah, we tried it and started it. I said, but you know what? It's really helping. It helps me to stay connected with my friends around the world. Um, and it's, you know, we all learn something every time we do it. And just the opportunity to see people, or mm -hmm. to hear people, right? It's it's what it's all about. Um, you know, and, and it I it brings you happiness and joy. You know, right. I mean, you other people might look at it as a burden, but Sue, this is something you really enjoy doing. Right. You know? I really enjoy helping people. When when people in Illinois were struggling with getting on unemployment, my friends, I happened to know somebody and I picked up the phone and called. I mean, who knows somebody at the Illinois Department of Employment? Right. But you know, through all my speeches and when I had given, you know, he was there and we had connected and it brought me great happiness to help people. People are like, why are you helping them? Are they paying you? I'm like well, no, we're all in this together, you, right. know? Um, you know. I delivered meals for our Kiwanis Club today. You know, I got to see three families who, you know, have been, I've been delivering, we've been delivering meals for a long, long time. One of the members of our club is, is coordinates it, you know, and I'm very happy for the fact that she has reached out to our club, reached out to the school and said, hey, let's get this going, right? We can do this. I now volunteered our local vaccine clinic. Same thing. You know, I think we can we can take this and turn it all into a negative and really sit down and you're right, the news, you know, the culture, oh. the societal unrest. I mean, you can think about all that stuff, but we can, our role as I see it is to, to take care of ourselves and our, our connections. Right. You know, Absolutely. We, and we can't solve the big, big picture. And you don't forget that. You don't put your head in the sand like an ostrich. I'm not saying that. My gosh, you know, I, I do look at the right. numbers and I do pay attention and I, I, I do take that information in. But when I think about how, how when I start spinning, I call that, when I'm like, oh my God, you know, it's stuff I can't control. I could go vote. And what I did is I worked the election. I love being an election judge. This was my fourth year. I could do, fourth election, I should say. I could do that. 
And that was my way of contributing, you know, instead of like wringing my hands and being on Twitter and going down that rabbit hole, like, okay, right. I'm going to make sure that in my precinct, in my ward, anybody who wants to vote can vote. And thank God I was there because there was a really nasty guy. His name is Lionel. And Lionel <laughs> might not be working anymore. <laughs> somebody who's being a bully in a situation and you do have to stand up and, but the way that the um because we had so many first-time poll workers in chicago the way the other poll workers who were young women in their 30s and 40s and he did not interact well with women um they appreciated having an advocate so we took a negative situation where he was being a little bit of a bully a big bully actually and uh and turned it into a positive for the rest of us and that's what that's what we're all here for right we all can do that yeah absolutely so sometimes we just have to step back a little bit but we all can provide that for someone and absolutely. you may not think about it right and i'm the i'm the same way you know i have a happiness i won't say i have a happiness jar because it's really a happiness room oh. from all my travels right so you know but i love looking at them i love seeing what's going on and what I, you know i think about the times that that I've traveled and been with people and stuff. And then you think about and go, okay, okay. You look at something else and you think about that story. You know, I have my Michigan state stuff as you know, we, we joke and stuff, yeah. um, but there's so much to do. And you think about every one of us is probably doing three things for each ourselves every day. Now yes. we just don't put it in that frame of mind. Right. And then we think I haven't done anything for myself. Like, I never get to do anything, or especially those moms and dads that are juggling to be a third grade teacher, or right. a junior, you know, if they're being the, the counselor for the high school student who can't play sports or being the marching band. Right. I mean, they're thinking, and it's like, wait a minute, you, you got to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. And you probably are. So think about it and be grateful. And let me tell you, if only one of those three things happen, if only I have, like today, the only thing that's happened is I've had the cup of coffee. I didn't get in yoga today. Today was a yoga day. I didn't get in yoga today. And if I continue to do dry January, <laughs> you won't get that wine in. Tonight. But one thing happened that I really appreciated about my day, you know, that I did just for me. I had a great day today. I had a great day. We're talking to all of you folks. And this morning I had a presentation and I had a client and I helped somebody, you know, I had a great day today. So I'm not going to look at it like, oh, well, you didn't get the yoga done. Beat yourself up. You know, oh, you didn't get the glass of wine. Beat yourself up. I'm going to say, I had a great day. I had a great day. Sometimes it's just the attitude. It's, you're right. It's just the attitude. A couple of people have made some comments in our uh, chat um, okay. talking about how, um, you know, instead of saying something negative to say, think about what the story this will make a year from now. <laughs> Right. Think I about what that. you're going to be able to tell your kids and your grandkids a year from now or five years from now or 10 years from now and say, you know, that we talk about the 1918 or 1915 pandemic. We're not going to be able to talk about the 2020 pandemic. <laughs> right. We are so going to. I often think of that, too. Like they're going to say, what was it like? Right. You know, they're going to say, what was it like You know, when you had to start wearing masks? What was it like, you know, when you were afraid? I mean, I remember, I mean, those of us of a certain age, and my guess is most of us on this call, remember when HIV and AIDS came out mm -hmm. and it wasn't talked about and then it was, and we didn't know, you know, could you eat off the same silverware as somebody who had right. HIV and AIDS? Could you drink out of the same glass? Would you get it? What if they hugged? I mean, there were all these fears. And, mm -hmm. You know, people look back and go, really? You guys thought, well, we didn't know. Right. We didn't know, you know, and, and then we knew and we came to be. And but people look back and say, really? Did you? My nephew, this is crazy. My oldest nephew loves that um, show, The Stranger Things. I think it is on Netflix, Stranger Things. And he looks and goes, was that really like that in the old days? I go, the old days. We were in high school, Sue. Yeah, the that's you right. Know? We are not, you know, that's not the old days. He goes, did you all really dress like that in the old days? The olden days? It's the 80s. It's 1984. That's right. But it's, you know, it's my nephew who said to me, he was listening to ACDC or one of those bands. And he goes, well, have you heard about this new band? I said, they're not new. <laughs> well, yeah, they are. No, no, no. That was for my high school years. But it's new to them, right? So this is, this is all transition. 
Um, yeah. Daryl's Daryl's comment was, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's one of my favorite quotes. Yep. One of my, my favorite quotes. My absolute favorite quote is, what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? And, you know, maybe it is be kind. Maybe like, it is bring happiness and joy into someone's life. Right. And I think, you know, as I think about the people that are, are on with us tonight, every one of them, you know, is doing something for the good of themselves and the good of their community. Yeah. Right. We're yeah. every day we're thinking of, we're thinking about what we can do and how we can be better at what we're doing and how we can help our community more. And, you mm -hmm. know, what are ways that we can provide a little bit of extra for someone? Mm -hmm. I am. Um, I decided when the pandemic hit to do two things. Um, one is to work at the food bank. I'm um, the Greater Chicago um, Depository, and two to give blood. And it took me till June, from March to June, to actually, you know, my business slowed down because, you know, of course, I was right. running, and we kept thinking we were going to come out of it at any moment. And um, and then I went. And I started volunteers, two hours, and and giving blood, and it's my way of giving back. Right. Yeah. And that's every one of us can do it. Every one of us, and you pick what you want to do. You, you pick know, what I you want to do, right? I had a, my girlfriend who who had the laptop issue. She's she's uh, we're. Okay, Lisa froze on us. Um, but, uh, there she is. Okay, <laughs> that was really quick. You froze up there for a minute. Yeah, I said um, my friend um, who is at the depot, uh, she's like, we're like Lucy and Ethel, and we go to the depository, and then she stopped going, and I said, I'm still going to go, and so I just kept going, because I wanted to make that difference, now she's saying, can I come back with you? I'm like, yes, you can. Yes, exactly, exactly. And I no think, judgment. Right, no judgment, exactly, exactly. Um, let's see here. Uh, another quote, a person is as happy as they make up their mind to be. Mm -hmm. Lisa, what subjects do you teach at school? Oh, um, I teach fundraising and nonprofit leadership. Um, I teach at DePaul University graduate courses. So it's resource, they call it resource development um, and uh, nonprofit leadership. So right now it's the resource development course. Third time teaching like this on Tuesday nights and it's 16 students. My largest online class, I've taught a larger in-person class and um, then I'll teach in the spring the nonprofit leadership. Wonderful, we may have to send some people to your class. <laughs> oh, absolutely. What about that? What about that? I, love, I love teaching fundraising and, and how to fundraise. And, and most everybody on this call, our tonight's show will tell you that's something we all we all do it some way, right? One way or another. Mm -hmm. We're all in that that fundraising world. Well, I'm going to give you a couple of free tips. Um, number one, the rule of thumb is, and because Kiwanis is well known and most of the organizations you're affiliated with, for every four people you ask, one should say yes. That means three are going to say no. So every time I get a no, I think, oh, I'm so much closer to a yes. <laughs> I'm so much closer oh. to a yes. So don't take the rejection. Just think. It's just a law of averages. If you keep asking, somebody's right. going to say gonna yes. Give, right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and the number one reason people cite for not giving is that nobody asks right. them. You know, you can right. it'd be like if I told you all about a great party I throw on the 4th of July in my rooftop deck, but I didn't ask you to come, how many of you would actually show up on the 4th of July? Probably not many, if any, because you're right. like, well, she told us about it, but she didn't ask us. She must have enough people or. Right. I didn't make so, the list. Yeah. Right. I'm right. Not cool. no. Right. <laughs> Well, Lisa, I want to thank you again for being with us this evening. This has been a oh. great conversation. It's great to catch up with you. And, you know, we we all talk about, you know, how we need to catch up with people and stay, yeah. listen to what people are doing, you know, and what's yeah. going on. Um, oh, you're right. Lisa's fundraising tip also applies to adding new members to our clubs. Absolutely. Right? You got to ask. That's the biggest reason people say they don't join is because they were never asked. Right. And if you tell somebody you know it's different than asking and many of you probably have children and if you tell them something it's a different reaction than asking you know take out the garbage hey can you take out the garbage on your mm -hmm. way to the basketball hoop 
you you all know <laughs> right that's right you all know exactly you all know what you all know what that surly 14 year old's gonna be that's right that's better too <laughs> that's right well i'm gonna share with our group tonight um what's coming up with uh yes. michigan here let's see if i can okay figure out how to do this can you see now my sc screen with we can uh, see. yeah sponsored by kiwanis okay i've got a new screen here so i'm still trying to figure out how to do all this <laughs> Okay, um, so our series, um, next week, uh, Jen Moon is gonna be with us from Reading is Fundamental. Uh, Reading is Fundamental is one of our partners with Kiwanis and she's gonna talk us, to us about what's happening in their world. The week after that, Jason Barger is gonna be with us. Um, Thermostat Culture, setting a temperature for 2021. Um, Jason worked with us years ago with our key leader program. So I must have it on a timer. And then finally, our, um, Equity Excellence Certificate Program that we are doing with uh, two professors from, one from Michigan State University and one from uh, the University of Colorado is doing a program for us on the uh, Equity Excellence. It's, it's a four week program, a four series program. It starts next Wednesday, unconscious bias in virtual settings from bystander to active allyship. What's in a name? Talking about equity and leading through an equity lens. Um, it is a certificate program and will give you opportunities to build um, your skills and your knowledge on equity. Uh, the cost for the program is $100. Um, I will tell you that you, if you can find a program for $100 at this rate, you <laughs> sign up for it, right? Um, this program will also have a four, four months follow-up with that where our, our professors, the two people will um, do some work with us on communities of practice and help us navigate some of the tough waters we may be in. But this is a program that, uh, I've been, we've been through part of it. Dr. Amy Benami did the first part of it on unconscious bias in virtual settings. And it really prompted us to take a look a little deeper at what's going on in, in this world. So we invite you to join us. Registration closes on, on Tuesday. Um, and if you have any more questions, the website is there for, for that, or you can go um, send me an email or a question. Here's my contact information. But all this information is up on the Michigan District of Kiwanis, uh, web pages. And of course, you can find us on Facebook or find us um, at our website or get a hold of any of us by, by email. So let's see if there's any more chats here. Uh, okay, so we got some comments here. You're right. Absolutely. The worst they can say is no, but potential is yes. Thanks, Lisa, for your excitement is encouraging. Thanks, Lisa. You're a gem. Thank you for your positive energy that really spills over to everyone. Thanks, Lisa. We all need to hear this very much. You're right. We all need to figure out happiness. Mm -hmm. And we can and all do it. Happiness jar, happiness face. I have yep. I'm not up to the happiness room. I do have a Wizard of Oz room though, Sue. Oh, so, okay. Ooh. I mean, that could be considered happiness at the You're end right. of the exactly. You're right. Exactly. At the, at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> Exactly yeah, right. Yep. I don't have a happiness room, but I might have to think about that. You might have to visit sometime. And yeah. you went back. Exactly. Yes, so thank you for everybody for being with us tonight. The one thing that we will do, uh, give me till the weekend, we will go ahead and put up our recording up on our YouTube channel so that you can share um, the recording with, look at it again. A lot of times we get people say, there was so much there. I just didn't get to write it all down. And I'm like, yes, I know. We have, you know, a lot of information that we provide um, that we like to share with everyone. So with that, we'll call it an evening. Thanks to everyone who's with us. Um, we appreciate you for what you do for Kiwanis and what you do for your communities. And we will see you next Thursday at 8 p.m. with Jen Moon from Reading is Fundamental. Thank you very much. Have a great Bye, evening, everyone. Bye-bye.